F-U-R-L-O-N. Um, I am a local 596 laborer. I grew up in Charlemont, Massachusetts. Charlemont. Um, I was born in North Adams, Berkshire County. And I support this pipeline. This is our big dig. And I don't know if any of you... I don't know if any of you know, but it's called Local 596 because we're local. We are all from Berkshire, Franklin, Hamden County. We're from here. We, we hunt, we fish, we pay for conservation. I, I work every day. I work so hard for the benefits that we receive and I've never been told it was wrong until I came here and listened to these people. I mean, Construction in the union has fed my family for 22 years of my life, and I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. But I don't think that it's okay for somebody else to tell us construction workers what we feel is wrong. We're building I-91, we're, we, we're building Greenfield High School, we built your college. I'm building a retaining wall in Conway because of I Hurricane Irene. You know, I don't pour, you know, concrete every day out in the hot sun to be told what I do is wrong. Because it's not. That's for special. Please, nobody else should be speaking. Thank you. A union is a unified membership of men and women working for the greater good of better pay, better benefits, and better working conditions. I mean, are you going to tell somebody that their livelihood is wrong? I know that everybody is, has the right to their own opinion, and I respect that, but try to hear ours. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rosemary, last name is Wessel, W-E-S-S-E-L, and thank you very much for coming out here. Um, I think it really makes a difference to hear what's happening in the communities that are affected by these dockets, and I hope it's something you'll consider in the future as well. And I think it's, uh, it's a shame that the young lady who just spoke from the union is gone because I did want to address one concern about how um, the union folks might be perceiving those of us who are against the pipeline. We are against the pipeline. We're not against you. You are our neighbors. We know that you're from the area. We know the good work that you do. She stated lots of wonderful projects that you guys work on. We also know that your union is trained for solar, wind, and weatherization programs, and we wish you all the jobs you could ever want in those fields. So to continue with my statement, uh, Berkshire Gas's ultimatums that are printed on their bills and in the newspaper ads, as well as their application with the DPU, only consider one possible solution to the capacity limits that they say they're up against. To state that a 2.2 billion cubic feet a day pipeline is the only answer to capacity constraint without any accounting for increasing their own energy efficiency and conservation programs, without accounting for any reduction of distribution system leaks is unconscionable. Ignoring leaks, and the um, ignoring leaks and the opportunities to increase energy efficiency for its customers is negligent, not only for economic impact to the customers, but for impacts to customers' safety and well-being. I would hope that the review of this application includes a full analysis of what degree of constraint happens, how often it happens, and for how long, and how, and, um, how those times of constraint could otherwise be relieved. Capacity on the Northampton lateral was expanded only three years ago. It included adding a compressor station in Southwick to help feed local distribution. Um, and they're running out of capacity now. Uh, it's, it really stands that there's a real lack of planning on their part to have run out that soon after additional capacity has already been provided. 
I also hope that there is also a thorough investigation into Berkshire Gas's corporate owners, Iberdola of Spain. Iberdola is an international gas company that has been actively procuring sources of uh, U.S. natural gas for European markets, currently from Texas um, exporters, but they are, are looking for more to export to European markets. The NED pipeline that would feed Berkshire Gas's request for more capacity would send approximately 75% or more of its gas to export markets. Um, the most recently um, permitted terminal, that's Paraday's Gold Grow facility, has customers lined up for Spain, other UK and European import terminals set to go into operation just after Northeast Energy Direct would be slated to go online making U.S. gas customers compete with global markets in which gas sells for three times, three to five times as much is an injustice to domestic consumers. If Berkshire Gas is owned by a company who is part of that infrastructure, what does their relentless insistence that NET is the only answer to their supposed crisis mean? Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming out tonight. My last name is spelled H-O-L-C-O-M-B. And uh, we basically want to know what happened to the missing LNG storage tanks in Waitley? What happened to the possible consortium opportunities to expand LNG? Why isn't exploration of LNG liquefaction facilities and additional LNG storage taking place? How much can expanded LNG solve the winter peak problem that has caused Berkshire, it says, to declare a hookup moratorium? Why isn't Berkshire Gas looking seriously at alternatives like these instead of sitting on their hands for three and a half years waiting for TGP's NED pipeline to arrive? A pipeline which may never be built. Expanded LNG storage could help diversify Berkshire supplies, and I might add there's a lot of construction opportunity in LNG storage that we would love for you to have. In fact, I will say right now, as a ratepayer and a taxpayer, I would pay a premium to keep Massachusetts working toward renewables rather than working for a Spanish company. I'd pay more for my energy. LNG storage can be more closely calibrated to any local area's actual winter peak shortfall and avoid costly, high-impact, decades-long overinvestment in massive gas pipeline infrastructure as we work on our transition to an all-renewable energy economy. Smaller scale, LNG storage is typically faster to put up, smaller investment, and would mean less sunk and wasted investment in fossil fuel infrastructure as we unwind New England's excessive dependence on fossil fuels in the years ahead. The bottom line, if the department approves Berkshire's plan to sit on its hands for three and a half years waiting for the NED pipeline to come, the department will be condoning Berkshire's failure to explore potentially faster, lower impact solutions to its capacity problems, to the disadvantage of Berkshire's customers and the towns they live in and do business in. And that would not be in the public interest. Thank you. Hello, my name is Delta Carney, C-A-R-N-E-Y. I'm a resident of Ashfield, and for some inexplicable reason, I enjoy doing research. So I have found out a lot of information. One of the things that I enjoy doing is then passing that information along. So tonight I'm going to give you some of the facts and figures that I have found. Earlier this year, Commonwealth Magazine published a report that said in the year 2013, the state of Massachusetts used a little over 800 billion cubic feet of gas. 
During that same time period, the capacity of all of our current pipelines was a little over 1,700 billion cubic feet of gas. So we would have had to use double that amount in order to overload our pipelines. The other thing I want to pass along is some of the um, information about the financial stability of the companies involved. Uh, <clears throat> Iberdrola recently put out a video of their annual stockholders meeting. And during that video, they talked about all of the cost-saving measures that they are now having to do. They are withholding dividends until the next quarter because they simply do not have the money to pay for it. Um, this is not a good thing. Kinder Morgan has been paying their uh, stock dividends using free cash instead of using profits. This is what Enron did shortly before they had a big disaster. Um, in Delaware, in the Wilmington District Court, a suit was filed because $3.2 billion was missing from the budgeted and allocated funds required for the repair, maintenance, and inspection of their pipelines in Delaware. And the stockholders picked it up because Kinder Morgan was starting to borrow money to do some of the repairs. And they knew that this money had already been allocated and they wanted to know where it went. Kinder Morgan refused to provide documents. Yes. As far as jobs go, the 11 people killed in California working on a Kinder Morgan pipeline were not union members. This April, the one person uh, killed and the two people injured in West Virginia working on the pipeline were not union members. The two men last summer in Vermont who got arrested for having a meth lab in their cellar and admitted in open court that they were high on meth while they were welding a pipeline for Kinder Morgan in Vermont were not union workers. Kinder Morgan does not have a long-standing history of supporting unions. Thank you. Thank you.